You're listening to the Savoir Fair Audio Experience. Are you ready? The bass is louder. The Savoir Fair Experience is your guide to everything that has to do with lifestyle. From dating, rides, style, and entertainment. All brought to you by the editor of Savoir Fair Magazine, Robert White. Anything goes on this audio experience. So, let's go. It's still the best. Hi guys, it's Robert White. Yes, another great episode of the Savoir Fair Audio Experience is here for you. This is going to be episode 26 now. We are doing a ton of kind of new stuff. As you know, we interview people from all over the, the world, different cultures, different things, different businesses. And I am I'm not going to lie, I'm so excited to be on the phone right now with a Shevel. She is one of the co-owners of Traveling Spoon. Guys, have you ever traveled anywhere in the world and thought, if that guy's grandmother was cooking me dinner, I would love it so much more. Basically, this is what this company is, and we're going to learn so much more about it. So, Ashi, uh, how are you? Thank you for being here. I'm so glad to speak to you. Thank you for having me, Robert. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, I'm so excited. Listen, I, I, I know before we started talking today, I mentioned this. I live in a western part of New York. And I always go to these little farmer's markets and I'm always buying things from the Amish and different, like, you know, authentic kind of food stuff. And I'm always thinking, man, if they only would cook this at their home and invite me over, I would pay to do that experience. And you guys took that experience and completely turned it into a business. You're right. That is exactly what we do. I love it. I'm so but sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to, you know, get into the reason why we did it, which is exactly the reason why you wanted this sort of experience is, you know, to be able to meet someone from a completely different part of the world and realize over a meal just how similar we all are as humans, despite political and cultural differences, that is the power of travel. And food is that incredible connector that gives people a chance to really open up and share stories and, you know, break cultural barriers. And so that is the entire reason why we started Traveling Spoon, is to give travelers these really private, authentic, meaningful experiences that connect us as humans. I love it. So let's dive into a little bit more of the story, because there's just so much here to unwrap. And I'm so interested in this kind of industry and this business that you guys created. So you you have a business partner. What's, what's their name again? So Seth Lawrence. Okay. And I started the company uh, right out after business school when uh, we both had such a similar vision for what we wanted, uh, you know, yeah, what we wanted traveling to. Okay, makes makes a lot of sense. Okay, so talk to me a little bit about the creation of Traveling Spoon. Tell me the backstory. What experiences in your own life kind of caused this thing to become a real business? Yeah, so... It all started when I was in Mexico in the spring of 2011. And whenever I visit a city or country, I try to taste the local food and experience, you know, authentic food and culture. But I had such a hard time doing this job when I was in Paya del Carmen. The restaurants that came highly recommended, both to, you know, friends as well as supervisors, were these beautiful bohemian street restaurants. They were you know, tend to be crowded and touristy and cater to more of a Western palace. And I struggled really hard to find out there. And I remember okay, walking down the street to, you know, another restaurant. And I had to pass by this house on the street. And I looked through the window and saw this woman cooking in her kitchen. And I was struck by that. I was like, yes, that's what I want. I want to eat from her and hear her stories. Because that, to me, is, you know, what's really exciting about travel, is meeting these locals and learning about their food and history and um, sharing them with them. So, you know, that the genesis of traveling to me. And then fast forward a few months later, I was in business school, and I met Seth, and she had had a very similar experience, and she was traveling in China uh, many years prior to that. On her bucket list of things to do was to learn how to make dumplings from a Chinese grandma. I find that experience. So we joke about it, you know. Uh, 
she wanted to learn how to cook with no food, and I just wanted to eat in their home. <laughs> you know, start traveling food together. Yeah, you and I have more kindled spirits yeah, than yeah. Me and Steph, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, Very we, cool. We live to eat. <laughs> Yeah, so you both had this kind of unique experience, which is basically the same thing I was mentioning earlier, where I'm like, man, you guys are making great, great food. I wish there was a way for me to just sit down and learn about your culture, talk with you, try your food, learn about your culture through your food. Like, that's a huge piece for me. Every time I go to a new city, I'm always like, all right, I want to try local cuisine that's authentic to this place, and then I want to listen to local music. And those are the two universal things that I always try to pursue. Man, this is, like, awesome. And... So talk to me a little bit about Traveling Spoon, the platform, its actual self. So there's a, there's two ends to this, right? There's a there's a hosting experience and then there's a guest experience. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So we are an online marketplace that connects travelers with private and authentic food experiences in people's homes around the world. So like you said, there's the experience that guests have when they go to travelingspoon.com, they browse to all of the destinations and look at all of the different hosts offering different experience, everything from just a meal or a cooking class in a meal or a month to a cooking class in a meal. And then recently we've expanded to offer mythology classes, you know, producer tours and you go into the Asupaya, which is a vinegar making uh, you know, space and factory for lack of a better word in our host package and learn how balsamic vinegar has been used for centuries in South Africa, more than I do. Right? And then come downstairs and my favorite part of these schools is where she lays out the with foods from around the, the region and so you taste balsamic vinegar, different foods, balsamic vinegars on parmesan cheese or ham or you know, local bread and gelato. So it's a really wonderful way to experience the local food without having to say necessarily, you know, get into a two to three hour cooking. So we have that section of the website, which is available to our guests where you, you know, browse the food experiences that you're looking for. I will say that our experiences are private. The reason for that is, while I think it's fun to have a meal with, you know, 10 to 12 people around the big dining table, um, our travelers will end up talking to each other and not to the host. And our entire mission is to create that connection that comes when you have a one-on-one experience with you. So all of our experiences are private um, to, you know, really connect with you. That. And then the other side of the market is for our hosts, where if you want to be a host, you can become a host. All of our hosts are personally vetted. Um, we then bring them on to the platform. And they create their profiles. Um, the menu, the availability, and the pricing, and that is how we connect both guests to our. I love this thing so much. I'm, I'm while we're talking, I'm bouncing around the website looking for experiences already. So, <laughs> oh. if anybody else wants to follow along, it's at travelingspoon.com. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean that's very cool. There's another thing I saw on your Instagram account that basically said that everyone's 100% vetted. Can you talk to me a little bit about this vetting process and how you guys are verifying that these are like, you know, legitimate people that are wanting to really host an experience and not some other kind of ill intent or whatever? Yeah, of course. You know, this is a food experience and a human experience. So we care deeply about the quality of these experiences. Personally, that everything we host is even on our market. So it's a two step process, post apply online. Um, we then have, you know, video calls with each one of our hosts to ensure that they are passionate about the food and they love hosting, like training, um, and also that they can speak some level of English. It doesn't have to be absolutely fluent, but the guests tend to be from, from the U.S. and from Australia and Europe. We try to ensure that our hosts speak English. And after being you know, after they pass that sort of video interview part, then we have ambassadors around the world vetting our hosts. So it all actually happened by accident. We had, when we first started, we had so many people, food bloggers, photographers, um, and just, you know, journalists interested in joining us, and we just didn't have jobs everyone, but we 
had the dress and I was people who loved to go to travel and so what we do then is match our hopes and needed three dresses with ambassadors who are traveling to the region. So in exchange for a free meal, our ambassadors would give us their own opinion, fill out the right kind of vetting documents. And that allowed us to, you know, bring on food for now and keep on the distance. That's cool. So are the guests, um, me as a, a user of the platform, am I, is there also a vetting process for the people that are booking and going to people's homes? Is the, is the payment for that um, process done before I even show up? Yeah. So when a guest signs up to our platform, you know, and we create a booking, we ask a variety of guests, you know, where the guest is from, why they're traveling to the region, what their dietary restrictions are. Um, how old they are, and also we do a credit card check. So, you know, it's really good before before. Okay, yeah, that's very cool. I love that you guys are really and, focused on the safety aspects of all this too, which is awesome. Yeah, and we found that, you know, people who love food and travel, I believe are some of the best people in the world, and we are really looking for, you know, production with locals and cultures. We found that that's this, um, the types of stuff we have while looking for this sort of experience are truly um, some of the most fun, engaging, and warm. Yeah, yeah. I like that part too. And I like the one on one kind of experience that you were talking about. That's really kind of unique that I can meet with my host, basically have them cook with me, and then I'm not distracted by my friends at the table. I'm distracted by just having that communication with that person. and and bonding and talking. I think I would be the kind of person that would go to someone's home and do this, which is so cool, and then be able to talk to them about their culture a little bit more, talk to them about the, the you know, the tastes that are in this food and what's unique about it. And like that, that kind of stuff is really kind of cool. And, and obviously some of the recipes that have traveled the world potentially, like you have hosts in pretty aggressively in New York City, but not all of them are creating American food, right? We're not going there for burgers and fries. We're getting really authentic things because, you know, New York is just a, a mix of so many different cultures. So I like that part exactly. of it. Yeah. yeah. But I also like that, you know, someone's little Italian grandma is probably making me pasta when I'm in Italy, and I love that concept. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely right. You know, we try to look for the most local cuisine, but sometimes like New York City and Mumbai are melting pots of different cultures. And so I'm really proud to feature cuisines and micro cuisines from, you know, around India that create the demographic that is in Mumbai. So you'll find Parsi cuisine, you'll find Maharashtra cuisine, you'll find, you know, cuisine. So it's really exciting to offer, um, to just give our hosts the opportunity to express themselves creatively to their food and also share parts of the food. Yeah, that's awesome. So when did your website actually launch? Did I, is it just this year that you guys launched? You're just getting off the ground? No, we've been around here a little bit, probably. So we started in 2016 where we had our automated website. Okay. So just to book directly with hosts. Um, and then a few years after, as you can imagine, when COVID hit, it was oh, yes. one of the, the hardest times for us. Um, I remember I was seven months pregnant with my second one, and COVID hit, and our revenue was just dropping. And, uh, you know, because people were canceling left and right. Mm -hmm. And so we did two things very quickly. One was we, you know, start to drop to give our most cash with hope um, money. So that they could survive for the next, you know, three to six months. We didn't know how long it was going to last. So many of our hosts were depending on us for income, and so we didn't want to leave them hanging. And then the second thing that we did was we pivoted to offering online cooking classes. So within four weeks of the pandemic, we had about 25 online classes, and within seven weeks, we had about over 100. And I was really surprised by how well that did because, you know, we. While you're not there in person smelling the spices and, you know, tasting the food, our guests and hosts had this wonderful connection, even virtually, where they were sharing stories and, you know, cooking together. So what would be a private virtual cooking class where you would choose a time that you wanted to cook, but that they are, you know, Florentine grandmother in her in her kitchen, and then you would get on to Zoom and 
in New York City and then learned to cook, you know, pasta from scratch and hear her stories. And what was wonderful about this experience was, one, it democratized food travel because now you could afford to, you know, virtually travel to another host in a different part of the world and meet them and learn who they were and learn to cook to them and learn their recipes. But also, um, our host and guests all along, you know, just created this connection virtually and so, Hosts were like, you know, when this pandemic is done, you should come visit me. And people were like, absolutely, we would love to come to you. Worked <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> out. But having said that, we are so grateful for the return of travel now and, you know, the back to offering our in person travel. Yeah, that's, man, that's crazy to think about too, because I was like, um, that pandemic was such a dramatic thing that happened to the whole world, and your business would 100% be affected by it. But again, you pivoted and now have these classes that are kind of a structured thing with the business, which is super cool. Um, I mean, applaud for that because not too many business owners really know how to pivot when things like that happen, right? I mean, my business was the same thing. Um, obviously, magazines went, everyone unsubscribed. <laughs> it was it was the most crazy thing I could possibly see. Like anyone that was spending extra revenue anywhere, subscription yeah. services, you name it, with the exception of like Netflix probably who got a ton more, but like... Those, those, I mean, I felt the same kind of thing. People were just unsubscribing like crazy. And I'm like, what is happening? And they were just falling off. I'm like, people still need to read. I don't know <laughs> where they're all going. Yeah, it's like you have a little bit more time, right? To read. Exactly. You would think you'd get more subscribers, but it was just a weird thing for me in the pandemic too. So to hear your story and how you guys responded, but did you say that you, you were taking care of hosts during that period? Well, we raised funds for them. Yes. Ah, so, okay. You know, our wow. community, all of our teams contributed, our investors, our advisors, just everybody. It was such a coming together of, of people who were dedicated to helping out our host. Man. Yeah, I love that. So you guys have been doing this for a while now. Can you talk to me a little bit about some of the, like, user experiences that you've heard about? Like, what kind of things are kind of cool and unique? Like the little heartfelt stories that you guys have been um, hearing from people that are using the service? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, I'll start with sort of our mission and then give you examples. Of, so, the first was obviously to create meaningful travel experiences. And what I love about that is I remember one of our hosts in Chennai hosted a couple from London in their home about many years ago. And then the next year, I get a Call from my host and she's like, what's wrong? And I was like, oh, I don't know. Are you still in Chennai? And she's like, no, I'm in Connecticut having Thanksgiving with the host that I hosted from last year. And it was a wonderful way of this, you know, this connection was so deep that not only did she host the guests in her home, they had invited her to stay and have a Thanksgiving meal with their home in, their home in Connecticut. This was really wow. nice. And to see that really deep connection happening was, you know, the entire reason why we thought. But it makes the world a smaller place by connecting people and getting them to understand that, hey, at the end of the day, we truly are just no one with similar values. Like our, you know, a host in a grandmother in Vietnam is just as likely to force food her to visit grandmother in New York. <laughs> seeing these wonderful similarities among people around the world. So, you know, pretty meaningful travel experiences are the core of what we do. Second one is to preserve culinary traditions. So, we, you know, I have a host in Mexico who was like, you know, actually, my kids don't want to learn to make more than my grandmother's up to mole it two to three hours. I love them. Couple from San Francisco is willing to learn my grandmother's recipe. And so, it's just a, a unique way to, you know, preserve those culinary traditions and have them live on in people around the world. And then the last is, you know, to provide income to the globe. We um, connect travelers directly to hosts, so hosts, host, you know, get the majority of the, the prices that travelers pay. And uh, I'll share a story that I shared often in the past because it's really near and dear to my heart is, you know, we had a host in Bali. And he, when I first met him, so it was back in the day when we personally vetted our own host, it was really fun, but then stopped doing that into something got bigger. But um, Deva used to be a local gardener at um, at a resort and a staff. And he, oh my God, his experience with him is just something. He walked into 
his garden and he, you know, you explore all of the tropical spices and ingredients, everything from the langa, to like lemongrass and mm. fruits that, you know, I hadn't seen hanging from trees since I lived in India 30 years ago. And it was just, just and so we, you know, would pick herbs and spices and he would talk to you about how vanilla grows and pineapple is grown and things like that. And then you come into uh, his kitchen, which is an open kitchen using a wood fired stove, and you learn to cook with his wife, Hero, and their family. And um, I remember, you know, asking them to do a black and white checkered pattern on a lot of his things there. So it was on the aprons and on the tablecloths. And, and I said, what, what's the significance of it? You know, salmon patterns tend to be more intricate and colorful. And he said, Oh, actually, this is just a constant reminder about the balance of life. And he said, What? He said, Yeah, you know, there are, um, there are times in life when things appear to be, you also have to be constant, but then you like to make consequences. And then sometimes when things are bad, it's not all bad. You can always see a silver lining. And, you know, I just thought about them. He said, oh. You know, in every one of us, there are Times when we were good and times when we don't be here. So well. and, and it's okay. And the Balinese are just such a calm, balanced people because they have this like, constant reminder that in every situation and in everyone, there's some good and some not so good, and it's all right. And it really changed how I look at life. You know, for me, I'm like, oh, there's, some, there's great people and then there's not so great people. I don't want to associate with that people. But Sometimes the fact that, you know, in every one of us, sometimes it's going to be used to work. I ask my husband about it. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. um, you know, it just allows you to live a more balanced life. And anyway, it was just incredible to me that it could be our cooking class. Yeah, I love Change that. Change how I think <clears throat> about the world. Um, the point I was making was, so when he, he was a gunman, and a few years later, they were hurt his back while carrying, uh, you know, like a resort, and so wasn't able to work in a resort. And so he started hosting traveling spoon experiences a lot. Um, and uh, a year after that, I remember talking to him on the phone, and he was like, actually, I just wanted to you know, please give my gratitude to the staff and the team at traveling spoon. And I was like, no, they were your, you know, one of our most popular hosts. Very grateful for you. And he's like, no, I'm just traveling spoon now. I can now send my kids to and that was just so, you know, just so amazing that um, he was now earning, you know, 10 times the minimum wage in Bali, 10 times what he used to make, uh, hosting from his house, you know, hosting with his family, sharing his food and tradition, and, and now sending his, you know, his food to the So it's just um, it's a story to share that how these experiences truly really changed the life of me. Directly to I love that. That's so cool. And you get to meet, I mean, in the process of like trying people's food and, and bonding over that. It sounds like a lot of the stories you're hearing, just people getting really authentic friendships from the experience and being able to connect with mm-hmm. somebody in another culture and making the world smaller, like you said. I mean, that's super, mm-hmm. that's super important in this day and age for sure. I mean, and I'm thinking about like all the different things that got shut down during COVID again and thinking about all the stuff we had to do internal. And now that the world's opening up. A lot of people are still doing very internal things. And there's things that are just mm-hmm. like before would have been crazy, but now it makes complete sense. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I love the the idea, the concept of this whole thing is so cool to me. So talk to me one more thing about um, about the future of this thing. Like what... What are the goals for your company? I mean, obviously, you guys are really hitting it out of the park with um, bringing on hosts, bringing on guests that want to work with the host. There's a cooking and culinary experience built in. There's a friendship thing that's vibing. But is there another layer that may be the future of uh, Traveling Spoon, like something else you want to reach into? Yeah, no, but our goal is to become the leader of culinary traveling. If you think about it, is isn't one brand out there that is doing this, um, you know, everywhere in the world. And, you know, there's online travel agencies, and travel companies, there's food tours, there's all sorts of fragmented space. And our goal is really to become the platform that you think about when you think of having an authentic food. 
whether that is a cooking class and meal, whether that you know, an olive oil workshop, and harvesting experience, whether that is learning to make rum drinks from our, you know, rum alier in, in Barbados. The goal is to really bring on these truly authentic food and drink experiences onto our platform around the world that give travelers a chance to really appreciate history, people, cultures, food, food. Yeah, I love that. It's an excellent mission, honestly, because it's something that's definitely needed to bring the, make the world a whole smaller and let people kind of um, expand their horizons. This is a big thing for me when I travel. I instantly go after local cuisine. I go after local music. I want to find those things. I want to learn about the cultures of those countries. That's that's super cool. But now, now I'm a Travel Spoon customer, <laughs> and I will be I I will be signing up. You'll see that subscription soon. I mean. Such a such a cool vibe to know that like this is the experience that you guys are created and have offered. So let me tell the people really quick, like we're at travelingspoon.com is the website. Traveling Spoon is also their Instagram handle. So go over there and peek at some stuff, learn a little bit more, sign up, right? We want hosts and we want people to explore and make friends and bond with other people over food. Um, I looked at the the list. Like as soon as you get on the website, there's a drop down menu of all of the places. Like where are you traveling to? It is extensive, especially in the U.S. and obviously in India. So I feel like uh, she's got a little play in that. Um, but there's a ton of stuff in here. Like it's a huge list of places. So there may be something where like even if you're not traveling, you could just go. Maybe there's a neighbor in the city or in Seattle or you know some local U.S. city that you might live in. Maybe there's something local you could go and experience and try and then travel to learn more from other cultures. But this is just such a cool little thing. I love this whole business idea. Oh, I want your passion. It's just wonderful. Thank you so much for your for your support. It's really, really fun of you. Um, yeah, absolutely. That was a, a wonderful summary of all of the things we offer. The one additional thing I will say is that we also offer gift cards and gift certificates. So if you'd like to give an experience to a friend who's traveling with someone who's honeymooning um, or even just an online, you know, cooking class experience for people who just love food and want to learn something new and different, I'll be offer a gift experience. Perfect. And I can see that on the website too. There's a give a gift um, thing up in the top right corner of the website. When you're on it, you can see that. You can definitely fill all that information out and gift somebody, which is like we're in the giving season in the next couple months. So it's very important to go get your shopping done and buy people these culinary experiences on this website. <laughs> um, well, very cool. I mean, Ashi, thank you so much for your time. And I'm so glad that we were able to connect. I love that I had an idea months and months ago and now it's fruition and I didn't even know you existed until today. Um, but I'm glad that I found you because now I'm going to be, like I said, a subscriber and go meet some, make some new lifelong friends, hopefully. Um, but yeah, really thank you for kind of giving us a, a rundown on the business and what you guys are doing. And it seems so meaningful. And I'm glad you guys are so passionate about it. Well, thank you so much. It's just been a joy to be speaking with you about travel. I truly appreciate it. Excellent. Well, have a great day. We'll talk soon. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the show. Please take a minute to head over to www.savfair.com and subscribe to our publication.